Okay, hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel with me Devi Natasha Irawan and I'm going to share to everyone about the perspective on teaches teaching by Daniel Pratt. What does that comes up into your mind? when you are hearing about the perspective on teaching. Everyone, we are really often asked what is a good teaching, while the literature speaks to the characteristics and practices of a good teachers. Much of the assessments of teaching has to do with the match between the students and the, the teacher's perspective of the role of the teacher, right? How do we view our role as a teacher and what does the mean for our teaching? Daniel Pratt has done a significant amount of work in this area. Here is an adaptation of his work on the five different perspective teachers have on their role and what it means. Check it out. First, transmissions perspective this is a very common orientation in higher education teachers with a transmission perspective have a substantial commitment to content mastery and believe that the process of learning is additive in order to transmit knowledge from teacher to the students they provide clear objective give well organized lectures adjust the pace of lecturing, make efficient uh, use of, of class, uh, class time, answer questions, set high standards, and develop objective means of assessing learning. But, there's a but here. As with all perspective, transmission teachers have some difficulties that they I have a problems. They have problems working with the people who do not understand the internet internal logic of uh, the content. They also often spend too much time talking because they are primarily focused on the content, not the not the learner. Second one, we are going to have a discussion. So we are, I'm going to have a, a very short insights of the apprenticeship's perspective. Teacher with this perspective believe that the learning happens when the students work on authentic talks in real settings. Apprenticeship's perspective teachers view themselves, uh, perspective teachers uh, view themselves as coaches who not only build skills but also transform learners' uh, identities to act acculturate them into professions. In other words, the teachers uh, learning is a combination of creating learners who have both discipline, competence, and social identity within a community of practice. Apprenticeship teachers create competency and identity using scaffolding or breaking complex tasks into developmental smaller steps and then teaching from the simple to the complex ones. Uh, for all the teachers like this one, it's very difficult to find authentic tasks. Do you go with me? In the classrooms, of course. They often use the case study approach or project-oriented assignments to stimulate as closely as possible actual uh, practice. The third one is the development, uh, developmental, developmental perspective. The primary oriented uh, of a development teacher is to develop their students' increasingly complex and sophisticated ways of reasoning and problem solving within a field. Uh, they are interested in assessing uh, their students' needs and then finding linkage from where the students are to where they want them to be. Uh, the goal is to change the way uh, learner thinks rather than increasing factual knowledge best. Developmental instructors do this by becoming effective uh, questioners 
and by developing meaningful examples that learners can relate to their current experiences. There are also challenges here. Being a good questioner is not really easy, right? Finding the right way to stimulate thinking and engage your learning is a very difficult thing. Difficult, I think. Having the patience to provide sufficient wait time while the learning process is a response is often uh, frustrating because we want to jump in with the answers. Um, lastly, it is challenging to de develop assignments and assessment mechanisms that are consistent with complex reasoning. By the way, talking about the, uh, the ability of the students who can solve the problems, lots of uh, problems with the very good reasonings, one of the way to achieve that uh, situations is by giving uh, the students the experiential learning. So what does it mean? Okay, let me give you something about the experiential learning uh, and uh, the relations to the technology. Everyone, experiential uh, teaching can help us as, as, as teachers engage and motivate our students. Do you go with it? Encourage students to discover things on their own. Make them learn through, through experience rather than just relying on facts and let us trans for knowledge. Technology is another important aspect of experiential learning currently relevant to our society and also for the future. And, and I think that for, uh, for the effective experiential learning, the technologies should be utilized in responsible and critically aware manner. This encourages students to learn by collaborations and participations and our students become very engaged when they use a real life method of learning. Uh, research is indicative of the fact that technology can be used to enhance experiential learning in the three ways. Recording the experience and referring it to it later creating a virtual community of participants like students and teacher, and the last one, enabling new avenues for the community to reach its goals. And uh, as teachers, we need to open to new ways of uh, getting learning goals, uh, emphasizing the creations of learner focused environments that facilitate personal experiential learning activity and the use of technological tools to create experiential learning by teachers easiest uh, the, the translations from just being providers of knowledge to being the chief guides of learning. There is lots of ways by which teachers can help our students in experiential learning through technology. Uh, for example, incorporating social learning and interactions into our online learning online video conferencing, making students complete specific assignments using technology, using technology that employs sensory input and so on and so on and so on. For one is talking about a nurturing perspective. Nurturing teachers believe that long-term persistent efforts to achieve come from the hurt, not the hat. Our students motivation will be increased when the fear of failure is removed. There is support from us, from teachers and their peers, and achievement is a product of effort, not benevolence of the teacher. These kinds of teachers provide a climate of trust um, and balance caring, balance caring and also the challenge. These strategies include listening and responding to the emotional as well as intellectual needs and providing a great deal of encouragement and support along with the clear expectations and reasonable goals for each learner. There are things to consider with this perspective. Evaluations is difficult, especially when uh, the schools or when the institutional expectations are different from the, the personal's belief of what is needed to promote success. 
nurturing teachers often give too much of themselves and burn out quickly or neglect other important work. Lastly, they can find themselves constantly defending their perspective against colleague, colleagues' criticism. The last, last but not least, social reform perspective. This perspective is the most difficult perspective to describe and rarest category to find. Social reform teachers operate under the under three assumptions. First, their ideals are necessary for a better society. Second, their ideals are appropriate for all. And the third, the ultimate goal of teaching is to create social change. They have, however, teachers uh, much in common with other effective teachers with a different perspective. They are really clear and organized, bring students into diverse communities of practice, ask probing questions, and work hard to promote the dignity of their learner. For this perspective to be judged effective, students must come to believe that the guiding ideals are as important to them as they are to the teacher. This is not an easy task when addressing or uh, when changing underlying value systems of the students. What does all this mean? As Pratt points out, perspective are neither good or nor, nor bad. They are simply philosophical orientation to knowledge, learning, and the role of responsibility of the teacher. Research shows that the most teachers hold one or two perspectives uh, as their dominant view and marginally identify with one or two uh, others. What, but what uh, is important to remember is that the, each of these perspectives hold the potential for both good and poor teaching. It then um, becomes critical that uh, the, the teacher reflect upon what we do, why we do it, and what uh, the assumptions where we base our practice as teachers. By doing this, we will be able to revisit and readjust if necessary or our own assumption and preconceive uh, notions about the teaching and learning. In other words, we will continually improve the educational climate for our students. That's what I can share to you everyone. I'm going to get back uh, to my channel later on. See you and bye-bye.